okay? And then this one says, oh, the study said there was an so there was an association, and in reality there was one. Okay, that's one minus beta. We call it power. Boom. That's it. That's nothing else you need to know about this whole null hypothesis garbage. Okay? That's it. And you, they will ask us, the, the question's coming, okay? They, 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 you cannot escape a probably a step one test without somehow getting answered, questioned about this null hypothesis stuff in biostatistics. You know, whoever's creating these questions is going to pull one from that section. Period. All right? Now, a uh, little concept I'm going to tell you about. If, you, if I was to make a study better, you know, if I was to say, well, man, how many people, uh, uh, you know, something happens to them, what's the best thing I could do? Well, let me just get more people in the study. You know, let's just increase my power, right? Let's just get more people in here, and then eventually the statistics will take over, and whatever it is, it is. All right? So how do you increase the power? How do I make this thing better so there's association with association? Increase the numbers. You know, they're going to say that. How, how do you make this study better? Just look for whatever answer choice it has. I'm just going to increase the numbers in my study. And they say, well, what made this study useless? Well, there wasn't enough people in the study. Okay. All right? One more time, because after this, it's all this is just questions I got. All right? This is the null hypothesis chart. The only other charts that we talked about this whole process are, you know, is this guy. You know, true positive, all that stuff. All right? The only other box I made is this one. Null hypothesis. The key, the key is labeling it correctly. One and a zero. One. It's really an O, but it's a, you know, you got to label it right. Null means no association. This box is irrelevant. It doesn't even get to play, all right? So, the study says there's an association. In reality, there was not alpha error. The study says there's no association. But in reality, there was one. And so that's like a problem, you know? Whatever, test you, whatever study you did, Said it didn't happen, buddy, and, and the fact is, it did happen, and someone got hurt because of it. All right, so they like this box. That's why you're going to understand it in words. All right, that's beta type two error. And then this one says there is an association. That's one minus the beta. That gives me that number. That's called power. Boom. Good. All right, let's try it. Here we go. A new study showed that the mean HDL level in our non-diabetic patients was 42, and that the mean HDL, le HDL level in patients was, uh, in diabetic patients was 35. The probability that this was due to chance, chance, not change, I'm sorry, chance was 0 0.05. There is also a 50% probability that concluded that there is no difference in the HDL measurement when there, when there is one in reality. Classic question. And obviously, it didn't take very well. Probability of this to be chance, what's your five? All right. What is the p-value of this study? What did I say the definition of p-value was? The chance. The fact is, this happened by chance. So what's my answer? D. D. That's it. Simple as that. What's the p-value? By definition, p-value says what's the what, I can't say what is the chance of this happening by chance, but that's basically it. So they give it to us. It was 0 0.05 or 5%. Basic, simple, simple. But you know, you think there's got to be more to it. No. P value is it happening by chance? Now, what's the power of the study? We know everything we need from this. We have it. We have it. This is where nobody makes eye contact. <laughs> All right, well, when we get this, we know we're talking about null hypothesis stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So if you ever get lost, you go back to what do I know? Let's just go to the basics. I know a chart. I know the guy told me to label the chart, <laughs> right? Let's study. And he said, oh, I can't get it wrong, so I got to put the one there and the null out there. All right, and then he said, make sure I know stuff in words. Here we go. There is a 15% probability of concluding that there is no difference in the HDL measurement when there, in reality, there is one. 
One minus five. So this fifteen percent is what? It's beta. It's beta, right? It's beta. It's beta. It, they, they gave it to us in words. Mm -hmm. There is also a 15% probability conclusion. There is no difference. We can conclude that there is no difference when there really was one. 15% or 0.15, right? Now, what was the question? What's the power of the study? One minus. One minus that is? 0.85. Classic. It will. Yeah. You can't get any harder. Yeah. You know, that's as that's as hard as it will ever get in this null stuff. Now most people don't like the null stuff because really because of the chart. You know. Yeah. I gotta memorize this. But it's not too bad. The one there, two there, all that kind of stuff. And they're gonna. This is how they're gonna ask it. What's the power of the study? And then they can say, How do I increase the power of the study? Well, I just get more people. All right. That's it. That's that, that's it. You, you know, you just take this concept away and you got it. Okay, you review it. Now, how I review, how I would review this, the statistics, and what, I, and what I'll what I'll try to do, I'm gonna try to go through these guys, and I might write out how to do it over here, and I might kind of scan that in, and then you can kind of see it over and over and over, because you don't want to, you know, when you study math, it's not about don't you know don't work out problems. I hate I hate telling students don't work out problems. Just look at it, play it in your head. It's a lot quicker, you know. So if I can if we can get up and show it to you, you just do it, review it. Biostatistics should be able to be reviewed in like 15 minutes, okay? Once you get it, don't lose it, all right? Don't lose it like most of us do. All right, we got those answers. Here we go. Back to some little bit more challenge. The prevalence of prostate cancer is compared to two groups of men, and the following uh, data was obtained. All right, based on the data, what is the relative risk? Whoa, relative risk. You guys ask for relative risk? Not odds ratio, relative risk. Rel one number <coughs> over two. Good. Relative risk, and we read math problems, top to bottom, left to right. Based on data, what is the relative risk for development of prostate cancer in men who had no children compared to men who had children? They could have flipped it around, but I have to go in order of what they're asking. So, and we got to really work this one, huh? What do you think? Relative risk, let's go again. We start somewhere, what do I know? Well, the guy told me relative risk is one number over two. All right, that's relative risk, one number over two. Relative risk, I don't know if I have a question, I'm going to give away. All right, let's solve this one first and then we'll go from there. All right. Now, what goes on top? That's our, that's our only other thing to solve on this one. What goes on top and what goes on bottom? No children. The guy with no children goes on top, right? Yes. Very good. Because why? Because that's how they asked it. Now, they, they could easily have flipped it and we do it that other way. So, with that being said, start me here. What goes right here? 80. 80. Over 80. Over 80. Plus. Yeah, 1,000. We're just, gonna, we're just gonna draw it out for the sake of our formula. They're nice enough to give us the addition part of it. And I, you know, on the on the test, it's gonna be something that you can really, you know, simplify. It's not gonna be none of those .66698 stuff, right? Right here. What goes here? 220. 220 over? 220 plus 1280. Right. Any go-getters can solve that? <laughs> I can tell you, I don't remember it. What do you think? Yeah. Thousand. That's where somebody blurts out before I keep going and don't get it right. You know, feel free. You know? All right. 1500. 220.
Zero point five. Close, right? It would have been somebody close. Zero point five five. B. Answer point five five. Yes. Yeah. We would have had it. We would have been close. Ballpark. Ballpark. <laughs> that's it. The main take-home point of this, I'm gonna, you know, I had to create these things. Now you can see somebody was in here trying to manipulate the numbers to make it their own, so to speak. And I was like, how do I, oh God, you know, how do I make this thing a nice, even thing? And eventually I said, I give up. I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna calculate these things and play with them. And, and of course, there's gonna be one number in here that says if you put this side on top, you know, yeah. that's how they do it. I probably did that. I probably did that answer choice A, just you know, just to just to do it like that. Um, but you gotta know again, top to bottom, left to right, and then you know which one goes on top. It's relative risk. One number over two. If it said odds ratio, one number over one. That's it. I don't care what else they ask. Here we go. What do you think? The below scatter diagram shows the correlation correlation between alcohol consumption and test scores in a group of college freshmen. Okay. Minus. Right. Minus. Minus something. What do you say? E. I hear E. Very good. All right. It's almost like a one-to-one, -one, right? I can go over one inch, up one inch, and it looks like I can keep the same uh, you know, slope, per se. Um, but people, be careful. I, I went ahead and put the point two just to not even throw you off, but I'm telling you, point six is, uh, is one they like, is something that's, you know. So you really have to, you know, make yourself believe that that's what it is, okay? But good, good, good. I mean, take home point is that it's a negative correlation. It's very close to one. Got it, all right? Study 200 patients. This is yeah. I like this one. This is good. This is good. All right. They studied 200 patients hospitalized. And we also have another person that's going to come up here. There's you. She's hiding. Right. She's going to come here in a second. And you didn't. And you know, we'll let her let her explain something to us. All right. So it's coming. All right. They studied 200 patients hospitalized. Hospitalized patients with complications related to pneumonia show that their serum cholesterol level is normally distributed variable with a mean of 210 and a standard deviation of 15. Based on the study, how many based on the study results, how many patients would you expect to have cholesterol greater than 240? Great question. Really, it's so many components. If you get this one, I know you got the concept. It's so much easier for me because I've reviewed this thing several times. <laughs> so we ask ourselves, what do we know, right? <coughs> They're talking all this kind of stuff, bell-shaped curve stuff. The mean is what? Two ten. There's 200 people in this study. Two ten. You want to jump on this with me? All right. Standard deviation. It's a tough one. It, uh, it, it, it's a tough one because it makes you think. But I'm telling you, if you, you know, when you, you see a question like this and you, and you can write it out and you can review it, I'm telling you, you'll answer everything they, they will ever ask you on this. All right? It says a mean of 210 with a standard deviation of 15. Now, hmm, 15. Interesting. 